I have been coaching First Lego League since 2015. So for six years, I have come to see what has worked and what has not worked. And so I have come to know three things today that I have made a huge mistake as being a First Lego League coach. And I would love to share that with you. No Lego Robotics. So mistake number one, I believe I made, and hopefully it wasn't too many times, was I had my students build their first Lego League robot before they actually knew what the missions were. And that's just a huge mistake because the first Lego League themes and the models and the maps, they change over the years. So what kind of robot was good for one year is not necessarily good for another year. And so I have been guilty of telling my students or my first Lego League team, go ahead and build your robot, and then we'll talk about the missions and the models. And that's a huge mistake because if you're talking about a first Lego League mission models where the space is really tight, you're not going to want a large robot. And if you're going to have a mission models and map where the you know they're spaced out pretty far, you're okay to have a bigger type robot. So for those of you that are first time first Lego League coaches, have your students or your team understand the missions and the models and where the placements of everything on the mat are before they would design their robot and look and see where they might put their color sensor. If you're going to have just one mindful of where the robot's going to need to be and where that color sensor would need to be to make sure it's on the correct side and any other attachments that you would have on your robot before they start to build this. They need to understand where things are gonna go, how things will operate, so then they can go to their robot and design it because of, that, of knowing what the missions are. Mistake number two, and I did this in my first year, I believe it was a mistake to go up to 10 team members. Now for some of you, you can do fine with 10 team members on a team, 10 is the most you can have. But for me, when I was first starting out, that was overwhelming to me because I didn't know which students would be doing which items. I wasn't very good at, you know, divvying out the responsibilities. So I had possibly four students that were doing a lot of the work and six that were just goofing off, talking, messing around, distracting the four that were working really hard. And so over the years, I have come to be able to, you know, divvy out the responsibilities a lot better. And I have narrowed down, you know, the amount of students that I'd like to have on my team, just because I know that the number for me that doesn't work really well is 10, because I feel I would have too many students for the amount of work that you need for a first Lego League competition. But again, I am not trying to tell you not to do 10 because some of you could handle 10 really well. But for me, that would just be too many students and too many um, you know, personalities to keep into check. And I think that the philosophy, too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the meal. I sometimes think that that could be directly applied to First Lego League where there's too many opinions and it's hard to have the team agree on that. But I have seen some teams of 10 do really well. So for those of you that would be thinking about 10 and you think you can handle that, I'd say go for it. And mistake number three, in the past, I feel I have not done the greatest job of meshing the perfect team together. Now I know that you never really know in advance if a team is gonna be perfectly meshed together. But I never really gave it much thought when I decided to say, okay, this person's on the team, this person's going to be on the team. I didn't think about their personalities as much as I do now. And what I mean by that is if I have a person who has a very type A personality, I like to be in control, I like to be the leader, and you don't want to put that person with the same type A personality together because they're going to end up butting heads. This person's going to want their idea. No, I want my idea. And you're going to possibly have a big, giant conflict. And so nowadays, I am thinking more about, hey, this person really is good at programming. This person's really good at building. 
and putting those people together instead of before just saying, hey, these four students are really good at programming. Let me just put them all together because I think they're really good. I believe that was a mistake because now I don't have a person who's good at building. I don't have somebody who's good at, you know, the project, innovative project. Maybe they're good at research. Maybe I have somebody that's good at building attachments. So what I want to be able to do better is have a team that I can just say, this person's really good at this one thing and they can help another student become better rather than all five of my team members are really good at programming, but they can't build anything. They can't, you know, they can't put together a, an innovative project together because they're just one mindset on one thing. So if I were to put this mistake in and wrap it into one big nutshell here, I would say I didn't think about the different skills that the person brought to the team. I just thought, hey, this person's doing well, well in my class. Hey, this person's really well behaved. Instead of thinking just, you know, blindly thinking like that, opening up the team members saying, this person's really good at programming. And they're really good at teaching people how to program. Let me put that together with somebody who's really good at building attachments. And they can teach other people how to build attachments. This person's really good at the programming. You know, they can um, help along people who, you know, need that help. And mistake number three, I believe I have made this mistake in the past where I have put together a team and I did not necessarily put together a team with different skill sets. I put them together necessarily with the best behavior. Wow, they're all really good at programming. And that was a big mistake. And this is what I mean by that. If I have one person that I said, hey, you're going you're to be on this team and they have a type A personality where they just like to be a leader, they like to have their way. And if I put that together with another person who has a type A personality, now they're going to be bumping heads. They're going to be, no, I want my way. No, I want it my way. And so I did not think about that before, but now I'm starting to take a look at team members and saying, hey, let me take people who have different skill sets and putting them together rather than putting all of these team members that possibly have the same skill set. So let me give you another example. Um, I don't want four team members that are all good at just programming. I mean, they might be the most well-behaved students, but if they're all just good at one thing, now we're just, our team is lopsided, where we're really only good at one thing and really bad at everything else. So for those of you that are just starting off being first Lego League coaches, I would say grab somebody who's good at programming and they're able to teach the others about programming Grab somebody who's good at really good at building the robot, the attachments, and being able to, you know, teach the others about that same thing. Grab somebody who's really good at research for your innovative project. Um, somebody who's possibly really good at designing, you know, designing the robot, designing how your pro your project will look like. Grab somebody who's really good at public speaking. I mean, hopefully, over the course of your first Lego League season. You're going to practice becoming good presenters and public speakers, but definitely have somebody who just can step up to the plate and say, well, let me explain to you how this works. And hopefully they're able to teach the others, hey, this is how I'm able to not be nervous. This is how I'm able to communicate clearly. So my big mistake was I really didn't think about those aspects of different skills I was just saying, hey, you know what? You're the four that I like the most and I can get along with you guys. You'll be on the team. I believe that's setting the team up for failure and setting the team up to not necessarily learn from each other. So today, hopefully, I have shed some light, especially for those of you that have just started off with First Lego League and your coaches. Just those three mistakes, I believe if I could go back, I would switch. But that's the beauty about First Lego League is you learn things year to year, what things to do and what things not to do to help you become a better coach and then eventually have a better team. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Mr. Hino from Seals Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out.
We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.